let's talk about draft scenarios, guys. The Dallas Cowboys, a team that's always in the spotlight. They need a lot of help on the offensive side of the ball. Where can they find it in the draft? We'll tell you next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. My national scout over with the Draft Network. Guys, happy Wednesday, and thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first uh, first listen today and, and listening every single day. All right? Thank y'all so much for being our everydayers, but I got to kick this thing over to my guy, Mr. LSU, my partner in crime, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on Twitter at the Talent Code. Keep talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, senior draft analyst with the Draft Network, man, in 2019, national champ with those LSU Bengal Tigers, man, here to bring you that what? Championship level content surrounding the NFL draft. That is myself. That is Damian Parsons, man, your dynamic duo for everything covering football, man. When it's college football, it's NFL football. What we like to always see over here, what? That it all starts with the NFL draft, man. That's why we watch the film. That's why you see us grinding the film every single day, man, to give you our biggest reactions. DP, we have a great show today, man. We're talking draft scenarios with Dallas Cowboys. You hinted at it at the top. What do the Cowboys need? Is it another running back? Tony Pollard from the football, right? Is it another wide receiver, right? Need somebody opposite of CeeDee Lamb? Or is it replacing Dak Prescott in this 2024 NFL draft? Then we got our segments, right? We get Dame's Dudes, my favorite segment, even though my name is not on it. It's still my favorite <laughs> segment, DP. And then we have Coach K's key thoughts coming at you. So, DP. Why don't we get this thing started? But let's start with our title sponsor first. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Keith, family. The Dallas Cowboys. Now, this isn't an overreaction thing. Yeah, they got their butts whooped Sunday night for the San Francisco 49ers, but there were some, I think there were some issues, right? They, we, 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 what's the phrase, Keith? The cream rises to the top. Well, in this situation, those issues with the Dallas Cowboys rose to the top. And there were some narratives that's been painted over the past couple of years, right? People said Amari Cooper wasn't that guy. And I remember you, me and you, especially you, were one of the main people championing him as a dude, right? And this passing offense has not looked the same since they traded him, what was it, last offseason, to the yeah. Cleveland Browns, right? Now, you, you move away from Zeke. Everybody hates running backs, right? They hate, they hate the starting running back. Don't pay the starter. Just roll with the, with, with the backup. Okay, cool. And, and, and Tony Pollard had a good, good season last year, over 1,000 yards rushing, Keith, as the number two. But now this year, the run game don't look so different. I know the offensive line has been banged up, but when you look at this offense, it lacks a, an explosive identity. It lacks juice in the passing game. It lacks, it lacks power and physicality in the run game. So, Keith, when you talk about draft scenarios, looking at this Dallas Cowboys team, this is not a team that I expect to be drafting top 15 or top 20. I think they're going to be drafting after the 20th pick because they're still a good football team, especially defensively. But offensively, Keith, and you look at draft scenarios, where do you where would you want them to go if the draft was today? DP, and this this is the crazy part, right? And we're talking first round, second round, third round, right? If you ask me where we want to go, the key thing about that 49ers games when it comes to draft scenarios, it highlighted that the Dallas Cowboys have multiple needs on this team, right? It, it's not, it's can, can they go quarterback? Fine, go quarterback. But then now where, where is this wide receiver core rank, right? When I tell you CD Lamb, Brandon Cooks. And, and Michael Gallup, right? What about the tight end situation? They, they drafted our guy, Schoonmaker, but he is yet to be involved in this situation. Then we talk about the very best of Dak Prescott. Or even if you get a young quarterback, DP, most times you want, what, a run game, right? So should they go running back with this situation? Because Tony Pollard is a good running back, but we haven't seen him be dominant as a number one guy. Then I'm going to look along this offensive line, right? Because while this offensive line may be solid, let's be honest. They got their butt whipped against the San Francisco 49ers. And I want to highlight real quick because something that was Dan Olavs something that Dan Olavsky said um on ESPN, right? And, and he he basically put all the blame on Dak Prescott, said it's all on him. 
but then also he said they got whipped in all facets of the game. You can't have both, right? Like you can't say that, oh, well, they got That's whipped in every facet of the game <laughs> and then turn around and say that, well, it was all on Dak Prescott. Well, Dak Prescott doesn't run the football. He doesn't get open. He's not the tight end where he has to block sometimes and he has to get open, right? He's not this defense that's supposed to be this bonnet defense. The defense gave up 42 points, DP. This is supposed to be a top, a top defense in the NFL. So when you ask me draft scenarios, there, there, there are a couple players that I, I would like to see. One is a is is a I would like to see a running back, but that will probably be second rounders, right? Because we yeah. have yet to see a, a first round type of performance from a running back yet. But then it's 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 wide receiver DP. I, I think you go get another another dude opposite of CD Lamb because CD Lamb is so specific in what he does in a sense, right? I don't think he's like a he's you can put align him in different um in different alignments on the on the field right but he's most effective doing something and that's playing yeah. a slot like that's that's his go-to that that that's where he's able to get open so i would look i look at one of these big guys dp i look at a keon coleman from florida state right and then potentially i look at a malik neighbors because he's shown that he can win on the outside so i look at i i, I like the key on coleman i mean and obviously if you could get your hands on marvin harrison jr you just flat out do it right you just you, right. don't, even, you don't waste any time with it but those are my three guys that i'm looking at dp and i, I don't not sure if they're gonna be there, but Marvin Harrison Jr. obviously, uh Keon Coleman, wide receiver from Florida State, and then I look at Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver from LSU. Well, Keith, and, and I love all three of those names, and those were names that I thought about, you know, as well, right? And you know, think about the Mecca Buka. Um, <clears throat> there, there's a lot of wide receiver talent in this class, Troy Franklin, yeah, Troy over Franklin with Oregon, right? right? Bring some again because to 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 the point, right? I like CD Lamb, I think he's a good player, he's just not dynamic. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's a dynamic, explosive, vertical threat, right? He's more of a – he's a good route runner. He's not great, you know what I mean? Great body control, catch radius, uh, his hands are legit, all those things, right? Blocks well. He, he's really talented dude. But what he needs is a counterpart. They, I thought that was going to be Brandon Cooks. But bring him in to be the speed threat. They haven't gotten that, that deep ball cooking yet, right? So they need to, Jalen Tober, who's a second-year player. He's not really showing up. Michael Gallup has not been the same since the ACL. They need to find a receiver that can really take the top off of the defense. Jalen like, Tober, they drafted in the third round. He has, he has yet to show. Yet. Like, yet to, to really step into being what we wanted him to be, right? You know what I mean? What you drafted him to be. So you so, think about that. Like, I want to ask I mean, if you're worthy, like, there, there's a lot of different receivers that can fit what they need. So dra draft scenarios, DP, is there a scenario, because I think D uh, Dak Prescott is in a contract year, is mm -hmm. there a scenario or a quarterback, and I'm going I'm to ex Caleb Williams out of there. Caleb Williams is right. not available, right? We're talking draft scenarios, so what situation can arise? With potentially maybe a Michael Penix there, right? Potentially a, a Quinn Ewers, a, a, a Bo Nix, right? Uh, you're looking at a Cam Ward. Any of those quarterbacks, DP, sitting at the first round, the back end of the first round, that you say, hey, I'd rather go with that younger, cheaper option with this team than rolling with Dak Prescott next year and getting us a, a, another position filled. Like what? Like, and, and that's the scenario, right? Because that's what you're yeah. faced with. You're faced with a young quarterback who's cheaper with this team, with this exact roster, or Dak Prescott with this roster plus whatever player, whatever position team, whatever position that you feel. I, I I still roll with Dak, you know, because because I don't want to bring a young quarterback. I mean, you're setting the clock, but you bring the young quarterback into a still a, a very mediocre offense. I'd rather go get another receiver. And I'm gonna say this: go into round two, Keith, just for the add to this draft scenario. Let me get Raheem Rocket Sanders in round two, right? Because they didn't re-sign Tony Pollard or extend him. Let me go get a big, physical, explosive and runner. You know Jerry Jones would be all about that. An Arkansas, I mean, Arkansas running, but he is oh, hundred percent. <laughs> Let's go, right? So let me get that. Let me get you know a, a, a one of these top tier wide receivers in the first round. You gotta in this situation, Keith. Before we, I know we got transition in a second. We you gotta double down on offense. To me, you got to go wide receiver, running back. I think Luke, Luke Schoolmaker would be fine at tight end. But go get you a bona fide number two that could potentially be a number one, right, and, and on another team, and go get you a legitimate running back. I don't see that with Tony Pollard. Heck, Rico Dallo had, looks better running the ball at times to me in terms of physicality than I see from Tony Pollard.
Well, DP, there you have it, right? We have to figure it out. Draft scenarios this week was what the Dallas Cowboys, what are y'all going to do, man? We laid it out there. We talked about it. We set up the situation. But DP, it's time to move on, right, to a new situation, the situation, the DP situation with Dame's dudes, man. So y'all know what I like to do, man. I put DP on a hot seat, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go ahead and get y'all a sneak preview. This is the running back edition. We're talking running back. So we're putting DP on a hot seat, see which guys get into the club or not. Coming up next, Dame dudes. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you are prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire every single week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit onto your roster. So let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Baker Mayfield, to the surprise of many, has been a borderline QB1 in fantasy while enjoying his most efficient season as a reality passer. Coming off a Buccaneers week five bye, he should need to pass for high volume in a matchup with Jared Goff and the Red Hot Lions at home in week six. Mayfield has been locked into a variety of receivers in the Lions can struggle to cover slot target Chris Godwin and tight end Kate Otten. The Bucks won't be able to stop stop the run much on Detroit, leading to a pleasing passing digits from Mayfield. Listen, guys, Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being the perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. I'm talking brake kits, LED lights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay bay motors has it and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time every time or you get your money back because guys the biggest thing is when you look at these prices you're burning rubber not cash okay so keep your ride or die your number one ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers Listen, Keith, Keith's got my guys coming to the table, the running backs. Talk to me, man. Who's the five guys that I got to pick or choose from? DP, I thought this was important to do running backs because we're halfway through this season, right? And and I don't even know if we talk about running backs that much in the draft community because it's, it's it's not last year. But it, it was it was fireworks with B. John Robinson and, and Jameer Gibbs, right? Like we, we talked about those guys plenty. And even I'll even say – like even a year before, right? By this point, we was talking about Kenneth Walker emerging from Michigan State and that storyline and everything. But DP, it's not the same thing, right? It, it matter of fact, it's it's kind of been the exact opposite. So let's start at the top. See which, see which one of these guys make it into the club. Start at the top. We going Ohio State running back Trevion Henderson. Does he make it in or not? Yeah, that was my summer. That was my summertime RB one, uh, and, and he's still he he definitely makes the club. His skill set. Is arguably the best in this class. He can catch the football, even though Ohio State, for whatever reason, this is a former wide receiver and cornerback in high school. They don't throw the ball to him much in space, and I think that's a mistake, right? But 5'10", 5'11", 215, I wouldn't be surprised if he runs uh, low 4'4", four explosive, uh, legit speed, but he runs powerful, good contact bounds. The main thing for him, he's <clears throat> he's been dealing with some nagging injuries the past two seasons to where it, he misses a game or two. He's got to stay healthy, but yeah, he, he's getting in the club. He's my guy. Okay, cool, cool. Let's let's go up next. Up next is Wisconsin running back Braylon. Allen. Nope. <laughs> nope. I right, listen. I I commend this. What six two two hundred and forty five fifty pound mm -hmm. former linebacker. That everybody gushed over right because you know you know everybody loves the guys who look like football players right. He hops off the bus and he looks like a dude. <clears throat> I feel like he's a very limited player. Uh, you know, lateral agility is adequate. Vision is solid. Um, I think he's patient. And his open field speed is 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 uh, above average. You know, what I mean, I think it's he's got good open field speed, but creativity. He, you, Keith, you know how I feel about running backs. If you do, if, if you have to have, if it's must for you to be successful, that you need an alley. You're not my type of back. He he need he's an alley runner. He's very physical downhill and all that. Solid hands in the pass game. 
he might be one of the worst pass protecting running backs I've ever scouted. Like he is really not I'm good in that in that right regard. Right. For to be that to be that big and strong, to to turn down the level of physicality you need to protect your QB. I'm not really. I, I, he's not somebody that impresses me. I think he's a a stable back in the NFL. And I, you know, I, I just not. Nah, he's he's not getting in the club. I can't do it. Oh man. Okay. Well, I and, and DP, I, I've watched some of him this year, and it's it's important to talk about too with the scheme, right? And and how they change things up in Wisconsin. They actually more going, air raid. Yeah, this, this air raid version, and now he's not in the eye formation running power. Right now, it's inside, inside zone, zone. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's it's a totally different picture for him. And you've seen, right? And, and that's what we talk about because we brought it back to that Zach Moss conversation. You're probably looking at the exact same conversation with Braylon Allen. Hey, if you put him in power. He'll be a okay, right? So I, I, I you put him I, in the backfield with Anthony Richardson and Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson. You, you gonna get some good stuff out of him? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. But DP, let's keep going. And we talked about him in the beginning of the week. Um, he was a stock up guy for me. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if he's in the club for you, right? And that is running back from Florida State, Trey Benson. Where are you at with him? No, I like Trey. Trey's getting in the club, man. I, I think Trey has the potential to be the, the RB1 in this class. Like, le legit, for a big physical guy that he is high hip, like we talked about on Monday, he has open field speed. He can create and, and with his footwork and different things like that in terms of exchanging gaps. And, and if you I always say, if you close the door, can you find another exit? And he does show the ability to do so, unlike what I talked about with Braylon Allen just a moment ago. You know, uh, Benson can do it. And he gives you special team value, right? He can he can return punts and even kicks, uh, especially for a, a back that big. He shouldn't have some of the uh, elusiveness that he shows in open field when he is matched one on one with a defender in terms of reading and cutting against leverage. I, I like Trey Benson a good bit. Like I said, he still has he has a couple games left to where if he if he can stay healthy and get back on track, like and and do what he did last weekend, right for for this offense, he probably can take that RB one label in terms of who gets drafted first yeah no and, and listen i, I want to see him be consistent right because you're, you're watching him and he had a big game against virginia tech but other than that he's been relatively quiet right and lawrence tour feely the other running back has been the guy that's seen a significant yep. amount of snaps and has been the guy making key plays so you kind of want to see what's going on with that situation and, and like we said we had a back end of the season we're probably close at the half point, I think this week can make the halfway point, and we're, we're just trying to see how that thing is going to finish out for Trey Benson. But DP, let's keep going, man. We're going up north to Michigan, right? We're going to Michigan to talk about Blake Corum. Is he a, is he a Dame's dude or not? No, I I, I really like Blake Corum, man. He he's a Dame's dude. Uh, patience, vision, cutting ability, scheme versatile. Can run gap stuff, but also <clears throat> excuse me, can run the zone. I I he he. When I've seen him catch the ball out of the backfield, he's been solid doing so. <coughs> Excuse me. But they don't throw him the ball a ton. You know what I mean? Uh, I think from what I was told in the during fall camp, he had bulked up to like almost 225, right? Mm -hmm. So he does – that's the biggest thing is that he's not the fastest running back. But I do like what he brings to the table. Um, I think that he, he, he is a dames dude, very talented player, productive. The, the main thing I'm going to have concerns with Keith is for Coach Harbaugh, like the, the tread on the tires, right? You know what I mean? Because I think he would have came out to the draft for 2023 had he not gotten hurt at the end of last season, right? But they ran him so much, it was almost inevitable because you're wondering, when is he going to wear down? And then we saw it with the knee injury. So that's why I do have some um, some pause and some kind of concerns, but his skill set and his game is good, man. So he, he's one of the best backs in the country. Yeah, I'm going to ask you real quick. How do you feel about the Maurice Jones-Drew comparison? Because I know, like, it, the minute a running back is productive and he's 5'6", right, he gets right. compared to Maurice Jones-Drew. So I'm, I'm asking, how, how do you feel about that one? I see more Ray Rice than Jones-Drew because Maurice, I think they were similarly built, but Maurice had, like, his speed was a little different. Like, his mm -hmm. open field speed was legit, where he could absolutely separate – from defenders at the next level. So that's kind of where I have – I think I see more Ray Rice in him, uh, where it's like shifty, quickness, uh, in and out of breaks, in and out of cuts and stuff like that. 
Uh, I think that's more so where Blake Corum su- uh, succeeds instead of like open field speed like Maurice Jones drew. Okay, no, cool. And I, I wanted to address that because I know there's going to be a kind of, I know for sure it's going to come up, right? Because that's the simple, but I do I do like and understand the Ray Rice um, comparison as far as skill set wise. But DP, let's finish this thing up. Running back five, right? Marshawn Lord from USC, man. I struggled to stay up Saturday to watch them battle Arizona, man. It was a late one. And then not only was it Pac-12 at the dog, DP, they decided to go into three overtimes, right? So we we we, we staying up. I was sleeping. <laughs> I was sleeping. But Marshawn Lloyd, man, he made a couple plays. So I want to ask you because he's he's a name that we're starting to see buzz a little bit. The transfer from South Carolina, he's starting to emerge. He's going to have eyes on him definitely through the back end of the season, right? Because Caleb Williams, you know, USC is undefeated. Caleb Williams will be in the Heisman campaign race. He'll have a lot of lights on him. What is the picture for Marshawn Lloyd? He's not getting in the club just yet. Keith. I, that knee injury that he had early in his mm-hmm. career, <clears throat> it, it, it it zapped a lot of his juice that I saw from his high school tape. Like he he looked much more dynamic and explosive as a runner. Even I think you go back to the Colorado game where he reverses field and scores mm-hmm. in the high red zone. It felt like that play took a long time to happen. You know what I mean? It's just like looking at Colorado's defense. Like why didn't you catch him? Because he does, he's not moving at a. It's like one of my guys who's a coach was at the game. He was like, bro, he's not. You know what I mean? He was not moving fast in that play at all. So I think that's probably a big thing for me is just the lack of explosiveness and speed. Um, but I do think he's a good back. I just need to see a little bit more. And, and, and they, I don't think they run him enough. I want to see him catch the ball more out of the backfield. I just have some questions with his game and, and overall, where is he athletically right now? Yeah, I, I think for Marshawn, because he's not a very big guy, right? I think he, he's 5'8", 205 to 210 pounds. So it's, it's, it's your, if you're not that big, then potentially want to see you be more dynamic, right? And I think that's going to be the conversation with Marshawn is how dynamic is he? Because he's effective, right? And you can see that he has vision and things like that. He's a natural runner of the football, but I agree with you. And matter of fact, I think it's been two ACLs. I think he tore his ACL in high school, and then I think he tore it again at South Carolina. So just kind of, you know, um, monitoring that situation because he's definitely a guy that will be productive and is productive so far but in his time at USC. But DP, that wraps up this week's episode of dame dude i told you i was gonna take i was gonna you know one take a light on you but i I was i was gonna you know give you something i know this for sure you can work with and we went through everything in your wheelhouse the running backs man talk about those running backs that's the top five guys right now that you know just kind of on our radar especially at the draft network and we're gonna keep this thing going because i think that running back one is still a wide open conversation but dp we gotta keep it going right moving on transitioning to this next segment is what coach k's he thought yes i told you if i slow it down i get it right the people coming up next man we have coach k's key thought with storms shortages pandemics and reliance on overseas travel especially with supply chain issues we need to be prepared more now than ever everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during an unexpected event that's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Guys, the Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to the medication you need in case of an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. So don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using I, <laughs> our promo code locked on at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, Coach K, what's the key thought of the day? DP, I, I, we 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 talk about roster construction, right? And and obviously this the draft podcast, and I'm I'm still kind of stuck on this performance by San Fran because we what we seen was was that that was complete domination in all facets of the football on both sides of the football, DP, and it's elevating us a, a guy that I gave a seventh round grade to Brock Purdy, right? And he went in the seventh round. He was Mr. Irrelevant. He was the last pick of the draft, right? But now we're seeing commentators and people talk about 
Hall of Fame. I mean, not Hall of Fame, I'm sorry, MVP, right? I was thinking about another Hall of Fame player in Tom Brady. But we're seeing, like, people are mentioning, like, oh, should he be in the MVP conversation talking about Brock no. Purdy? I know, DP, you don't like it, but they're talking no. about it. That, that, that they're talking about it, DP. <laughs> but you don't like no. it. But my point is, is this, is that should general managers, right, should we flip this thing on his head to where we draft the team first and then worried about inserting quarterback versus taking the opposite approach where you draft the quarterback and then try to surround him with a, a competent team? Because we, we've had numerous instances of success, right? And you talk about Tom Brady, the team was there. And then he came in, right? Because they were still a playoff team with Drew Bledsoe. So there was a, a well-rounded roster, right? The team was there. And then insert Tom Brady, you get success, right? Patrick Mahomes, you can have that conversation, right? Going back to Phillip Rivers, right? I think with Drew Brees, that was a winning team already. And then Phillip Rivers was inserted into that, right? Um, you're talking about what the Pittsburgh Steelers, you can kind of say, because, you know, there was a Jerome Betters and, you know, there were other players around there. And then you insert a Ben Roethlisberger and we can continue to go down the list but what you see is and even I would say even more current DP we've seen the best versions of Geno Smith with what probably the best teams that he's been on Baker right. Mayfield is playing better football with a, a better roster right in a better situation and I, I'm kind of looking at it through that lens DP is that should it be flipped on his head to where you draft the team first and then you come and get your quarterback in year two, year three. But you worry about putting your team together first. So that way they're learning football the correct way. Uh, this is an interesting thought, Keith, because it goes against what the NFL and the media have kind of tried to teach us, right? Is that you don't wait on the quarterback. You go get your quarterback, right? But you know my slogan, quarterbacks are the most dependent person on the field. They need all other 10 guys available to do their job if the front five doesn't block if their rb doesn't pick up the free runner if that slot receiver doesn't run his route right if guys don't separate what look at the bryce young situation right you go get your you you, you trade a farm you trade a lot to go get a quarterback a point guard and you don't give him shooters he has no shooters right that's like get, that's like putting ray john rondo on your team as your best player in the nba that's not going to work. He needs the Ray Allen, the Paul, the Paul Pierce's, the KGs. He needs guys. Yeah. So I like that thought, Keith, because it does go against the grain where you will see teams. And, and I know, like, especially with the Panthers, a lot of people are like, man, we could have kept that pick, got a better, got a player, an impact player right now. And guess what? We stink right now anyway. We stink and keep that pick. <laughs> we get Caleb Williams. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've literally seen them argue back and forth, and they were like, well, you know, people, that's just two different sides of the argument. But if you build your team up, right, I think back to the Dallas Cowboys. When they got Dak and Zeke, what did they do? They built up the trenches, right? They had Des Bryant and Jason Witten and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, think about that was a playoff team already because everything was there for Tony Romo, and they were still mm -hmm. trying to make a run. I don't know if you remember, right? And then Tony Romo just got injured, and Dak got Prescott. Hurt. Yeah, he was able to hand, turn around, hand the football off, and do things like that and play a balanced offense. Reason why I thought that the, the Cowboys should have attacked Jonathan Taylor to put him back in an advantageous situation. But, you know, the Cowboys are A-OK -okay with Tony Powell and Rico Dow. Um, but I, I'm – and, and the DP, and it's just because you, you think about history, right, just over, over time, right, like even with the, the Joe Montana and the Steve Youngs, right, like, like that San Francisco 49ers team was already somewhat – Put together, Steve Young was able to step in and do his thing, right? And and it's just about establishing the culture first, but putting so much because w w with the draft process, we sold a couple things, right? And it's the the, the court, it's a quarterback heavy kind of situation, right? Talking to the quarterbacks, everybody wants to interview the quarterbacks, quarterback, mm -hmm. quarterback. Let's and go watch then, the quarterbacks train and everything. Yeah, else. yeah, yeah, everything is like that, and then we they the quarterbacks get drafted right and you look at much how much time and resources and we go through back through drafts right like drafts where blaine gabber was drafted right and blake bortles right and it's like okay christian ponder yeah and, and christian ponder ej manuel right and you can continue to go it's like okay and maybe we'd have just went with the piece there right maybe that offensive lineman or something like that and then when we were ready as a team because now you're asking a, like a, a Blake, a Blaine Gabbard, a, a Blake Bortles, right, to carry an entire team, potentially a team that wasn't that good. And then DP, you think about it with Blake Bortles, when did he have his best year? 
when Leonard Fournette came there, Jalen Ramsey, they could run the football, do play action stuff. They had a pretty solid defense and a couple weapons on offense, right? So mm-hmm. I, I, it's a it's a concept that has been proven over and over again. I just don't know if what the NFL wants to sell us, right, directly correlates with this version of building a team, right? Like it, it, right. it's not the same because even with this, right, if, if, if you know, let's say, I don't know, X quarterback gets elevated in this draft. And I'm not, I'm, let's say a Quinn Ewers, right? And, you know, he, he's hyped up for us and it's like, man, Quinn Ewers should be a top five pick. But if he has to carry an entire team, will he be able to help that part out, right? But fan bases, because we know that the general managers listen to the fan bases and sometimes they try to appease the fans. And if the general managers and the, the owners and the team presidents, right, are all like, man, our our fan bases want a quarterback. And it's like, yeah, that's going to work. Once y'all draft them, they're going to be excited. And then off season, they'll be excited. Training camp, they'll be excited. But to your point with the Bryce Young situation, not Carolina Panthers. They aren't that excited anymore, right? They, they're, they're trying to find their way out. So DPI was watching this. And like I said, it was all for kind of the, the, the reaction to the San Francisco 49ers and just watching them be a dominant football team right. um, that I started to kind of, you know, have this thought. And so I wanted to kind of put that into the atmosphere. And with this conversation, this is, listen, this is me and DP on a podcast talking, but I would like to hear y'all points, perspectives, opinions on this. Also, that's why we always say, man, y'all tweeted us because we like to tweet back. This is just a conversation, right? This is a big picture strategy, right? Like, would you rather see this, like the strategy of building the team first and then insert quarterback or you want to go ahead and get your franchise quarterback and then go and figuring out about the pieces. No, I, I love the thought, Keith. I love the discussion because, like you said, Brock Purdy looks – some people – you know, I've, I've heard some people uh, on TV mention Tom Brady and Joe, Ma- Joe Montana. Mm-hmm. I wish you wouldn't, but you did. Um, you know what I'm saying? But why does he look so good? He's in a scheme that works for him, and he's on an elite football team. I'm going to tell you what it reminds me of. Stetson Bennett with Georgia. When you don't have to carry the load, when you're not the guy mm-hmm. that, that has to beat the other team, your team beats the other team. It, You know what I'm saying? Because you put Mahomes, or Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson on that team, they run the table, right? They're even more dangerous. But Brock Purdy is in a great situation, and it, it makes you wonder, why don't most teams try to put their quarterbacks in great situations? I don't understand, but nonetheless, I love the, the key thought, Coach K. Oh, yeah. Well, look, man, that wraps up this show. And like we always say, man, y'all talk to us because we talk back. We left you with a Coach K's key thought. But you know what else we left you with? We left you with Dames dudes. And then we left drafts and we left you with draft scenarios for the Dallas Cowboys. So there's plenty of content there to pull from, to talk about. Let's get this conversation going, man. You know where to find me on Twitter slash X at the talent code. You know where to find DP. You find him at DP underscore NFL. Talk to us because we talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out to y'all for being our everydayers, man. We have Thursday Night Football, and we're going to talk about Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. Is Russell Wilson in his last season in in Denver? Is there a young quarterback coming down the pipeline for the Denver Broncos? We're going to get into that tomorrow as we preview that game heading into week six of the NFL. But listen. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.